Have you seen um, Assange like in the courtroom on video? No, no, I, I, I've seen him. So there was a one day where uh, this whole narrative of the unruly defendant took hold right. in the mass media where he had this outburst as they were deeming it. And he said, this is nonsense. But I could tell you what was going yeah, on right then. Too. There was a human rights attorney that was testifying. His name is Clive Stafford Smith. And the prosecutor- I already don't like him. Sounds like a waspy guy. <laughs> Wait, well, is he should... good or bad? Is he good or bad? No, you should like him. I know the I mean, name. I already like him. Because I like him because I like <laughs> subversive, waspy named people. Yeah, I love him. No, yeah. I mean, it's it's great because he's he's got three names. And so- And he, yet is a good guy. And, and, he, and, and he can sneak in there and stand up for human rights. So you, you want those kind yeah, of people- Yeah, you do. You totally do. Covertly yeah. stand up. So in fact, he's represented Guantanamo Bay prisoners who are um, challenging their treatment. Um, and he also was responsible for being involved in a case in Pakistan that used WikiLeaks cables to try and end CIA drone strikes. Um, the, the high court there actually ruled that drone strikes were a war crime in Pakistan um, as a result of some of the work he was wow. involved in. Wow. Um, and they were using WikiLeaks cables for part of that case that, that it came out okay, around. So ignore the, everything I said, I love him, yeah. So he's sitting on the stand and he's trying to um, deal with this bullying prosecutor who I already told you is kind of a cartoonish buffoon, at least in the way he behaves in this courtroom. And uh, and really in over his head, I mean, I think this is a weak case to begin with. So I don't really know what he thinks he's doing. It's, he's got a pretty good career. I don't know why he would get involved right. with this. It must be that it's guaranteed to work and he, Julian's going to be extradited, so it doesn't matter how embarrassing right. it looks to advance That's the case. So scary, but, yeah. but he sounds embarrassing while he's in this courtroom, and he kept asking the same question over and over again to Clive, and eventually Julian just burst it out because the judge wasn't doing anything to stand up for the witness. Right. I mean, oftentimes if you follow court proceedings, you might get an right. uh, exchange like, asked and answered, please move yeah, on. Right. We'll all watch their legal dra dramas. Yeah. And Vanessa Baretzer just let this keep going and going and going. And Julian just lost it. And um, he said something about, you know, uh, 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 something about watching this by proxy. And anyways, without any empathy whatsoever, this was rep reported. And of course, they brought Julian back in after the outburst, as it was reported. And Vanessa told him that if you do this again, you're going to be removed and you may not be here for the rest of the trial proceedings. And, you know, nobody is stopping to consider the way in which the due process rights of Julian Assange have been systematically violated throughout this. Well, and I know from covering, I mean, he sits in this glass box at the back of this courtroom, first of all, which was definitely foreign to me as an American because we don't put our defendants in glass boxes at the back of courtrooms. Even if you're accused of terrorism offenses, you still get to right. sit with your attorney and right. consult with your attorney. So it's very wild to me. That's like what they did to Morsi. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Max Blumenthal has a really good um, report on this where he has you know these illicit or I guess, yeah, they're illicit photos taken um, despite the court you know, not wanting people to take photos, but he's got the photo of Julian Assange in the glass box and there's these others. And, you know, there's Adolf Eichmann and uh, dictators like Saddam right. Hussein and Morsi. Crimes these are against people, humanity. Yeah, these are people who have been in the glass mm -hmm. boxes and Julian Assange is sitting in this back room and he made an application. He asked the judge, can I sit with my attorney? I can't follow these proceedings. I can't hear uh, this was back in February and the prosecution, the U.S. prosecution didn't object. And she said, no, I'm not going to let it. Uh, so he is consigned to this glass box. Um, we what, heard on the what, first. What, is that a British? Is that typical in Britain? The glass box? Yeah. I mean, it's been there. It's it's become more of a fixture in the era where we're you know, fighting global terrorism, so but, mm, but yeah, it, it's really... it has always been there. Um, and, and yeah, there, there has been some with, you know, like we have the ACLU here so that those types of right. civil liberties groups have challenged it to some degree, but they've not made a lot of headway. So, um, so yeah, he's, we heard on the first day that his attorney, Edward Fitzgerald mentioned that, uh, he had not met with Julian Assange for six months six months before this uh, proceeding. 
Uh, so the first time he was meeting him in person was before court. And so actually the defense is in this position where they can meet with Julian Assange in the morning before proceedings for a half hour. But if they do, they're going to lose a half hour of time that they would have with witness with calling wow. witnesses. Um, and so uh, it's, it, you know, it's not good. And of course there's these stories of him meeting his, uh, his family um, cause he's got a partner now named Stella Morris and he's got two children and he only saw them for like the first time a few weeks ago. Um, cause this pandemic has been so oppressive, uh, for anyone who's been held in any prison around the world. Uh, and he's in these conditions where he's denied bail. And the reason why they're keeping him in this prison and they won't let him out of Belmarsh security prison, which is where they put like high profile terrorists, right. by the way. Um, is the reason he's still there is because he jumped bail. And uh, you might say, well, why did he jump bail for? Well, he jumped bail because he was claiming political asylum and in the Ecuador embassy. So to me, that's not a crime, but they're basically making a mockery of political asylum by criminalizing the fact that he wouldn't let the UK arrest him. And uh, so, so this is where we're at. This is, you know, he's, he's had his due process rights undermined in, in many respects. 